everyone. Buckle up for a new episode of Bumpaholics, the one and only podcast made to teach on all stages of the arrival of a baby, before, during, and after. Whether you are expecting, have questions about fertility, you're having difficulty with lactation, or in your postpartum time, you're sure to learn from our experienced doulas when you listen to Bumpaholics. Today, we'll be diving into pregnancy week 11 with me, Brittany. Join us in the comment section for today's episode of the trimester journey. Welcome to another episode of the trimester journey. I'm Brittany Brownell, certified birth and bereavement doula, certified birth photographer, director, and volunteer with KC Women's Ministry, and mother of three, soon to be mother of four. All right, we're going to start with the symptoms for this week, week 11. Hopefully, as we near the end of this first trimester, those pesky symptoms of nausea and tiredness are starting to go away um, because your placenta is almost fully developed this week and it's starting to take on more of that hormonal workload. Uh, we're getting to the easiest trimester of the three, that second trimester, where there are fewer symptoms and the smaller baby isn't as taxing on our bodies and on the muscles. So do you have a dark line on your belly growing? Um, starting to, can you see a dark line starting to <laughs> develop? If so, don't worry about it. It's really nothing to worry about. It's just your linea nigra. Nigra? Nigra. Anyway, um, although it's not really known what actually causes this to develop, one theory is that it's due to the placenta as it creates um, this hormone that stimulates melatonin. Um, the same hormone darkens the areola around the nipples, which helps a newborn find their food source. So it's just totally normal. All right. How big is baby this week? We are on week 11. Your baby is about the size of a Brussels sprout, around one and a half inches long this week. I love Brussels sprouts, especially with cheese. <laughs> They're so good. I want Brussels sprouts. So the growth and development of baby. Baby is officially a fetus this week. What does that mean? That means the baby is developing in complexity. Um, a lot of the major body parts and organs, organ systems, they're in place. They're just, again, developing in complexity. Up until now, it was considered an embryo. This week, baby is growing some details, such as hair follicles and even fingernails. Man, those things are long and sharp at birth. <laughs> like, you wouldn't think they're sharp. They're soft, but they're kind of sharp. And they tend to scratch themselves. So if you get some hand mitts, those are handy. Anyway. Baby might even find their mouth and start to suck their fingers and knuckles as they explore their face in the womb. A female baby at this, this week is growing ovaries, um, which is actually a week later than boys as they develop their testosterone in week 10. I must have missed that in my notes yesterday because I mentioned it. <laughs> Anyway, so some nutrition for this week, omega-3 and fatty fish helps pr promote heart and kidney health, both for you and for baby. Um, some fatty fish that contain low amounts of mercury and that are safe to eat during pregnancy, salmon, whitefish, tilapia, catfish, flounder, sardines, and even herring. Uh, white albacore tuna canned in water has a higher omega-3 content than light tuna canned in oil. Um, and that is a great source of omega-3 that you only need to eat every two weeks or so. Just if you are going to eat fish, make sure you get the ones that are low in mercury. So when to call your provider, just like we talked about in the previous weeks, if you just cannot kick the nausea, talk to your provider. Again, you don't have to suffer there. They have some options. Um, and the nausea can potentially be dangerous to your health. Some um, remember that vaginal discharge we talked about last week. Keep an eye on it. Make sure it doesn't change colors. You want it to stay in that milky white zone. And otherwise, we don't have a whole lot to be concerned about. You know, you don't want blood, of course. But yeah, we've got a lot of great things going on. Some next steps. 
keep active, keep moving. And I hope you've chosen your provider this week. If not, again, it's not a big deal. Keep searching, but you need to find that provider. Um, it's important that you have a, a provider that you are comfortable with since we've taken a look at some other things. This might be a week that you start thinking about classes you're interested in taking. Um, you know, we talked the other week about a childbirth education class. Casey Women's Ministry offers one through childbirth together. Um, we have a breastfeeding class. Casey Women's Ministry also offers one through Rose Sparrow and baby wearing. Casey Women's Ministry offers one of those through um, Hobbs Birthing. So take a look at some class options that you have and learn everything you can about um, birth. You know, what kinds of questions do you have about birth? If you don't have questions, that's totally fine. They might develop as you go through your pregnancy. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Bumpaholics. Again, you can find more information at caseywomensministry.org. Thank you so much for joining me today for this episode of the trimester journey. Um, if you haven't already, please comment, like, subscribe. That way you don't miss any of our future episodes. We post a new episode every week. We loved having you here. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon.